Hey guys, I'm home. Hope everyone had a good day at school. Sorry I'm a little late. Traffic was terrible out there. If you guys think you want for dinner, I was thinking pizza maybe. Oh man. I gotta do something about all these backpacks. Time to go build a backpack rack. This desperately needed spot for the kids' backpacks will consist of an inspirational sign created using a stencil cut on my vinyl cutter along with a panel attached at the bottom that the four hooks will mount to. Of course, the entire project will be all made out of walnut. I've now got the frame pieces cut to length. I've got the short sides right here with both miters on it. And I've got the top and bottom here with both miters as well. I have not ripped this into two pieces yet for the top and the bottom. That's what I'm gonna do next. I've deliberately done it this way to guarantee my top and bottom and both sides turn out to be the exact same length and have the exact same miters on each end. That way it'll make it a lot easier to get my frame fit together. I've also got the bottom, which is where the hooks are gonna mount to cut to width, but I haven't cut it to length yet, just so I can make sure that it will match up perfectly with the frame once I have it built. Now it's time to go ahead and rip these two boards down so that I have four boards total that are two inches in width. That'll constitute the entire frame. Then I can cut a dado down the inside of each of those boards that the plywood can slide into. Now it's time for one of my favorite parts, which is applying the finish to the walnut. I've got everything sanded up to 220 grit, so I'm gonna go ahead and apply two coats of wipe on poly with a light sanding of 600 grit in between. Next, it was time to cut the plywood down to size that would be painted for the sign. I first rough cut it and then came back and trimmed it down to the exact size. Now that the piece of plywood's cut up, it's time to go ahead and paint it. I actually painted it once already with some white paint, and I decided this was gonna be way too bright of a white. So I'm switching to this ivory chalk paint. I'm gonna paint the opposite side, and hopefully it'll look a lot better. It took a few tries, but I was finally able to get this stencil cut out and applied to the piece of wood. I had to cut it in two pieces. That's because the Cricut vinyl cutter that I have has a max template length of 24 inches, which is two feet, and this entire thing is four feet long. I didn't document the process of cutting these templates on the Cricut and applying them to the board. There's plenty of YouTube videos out there that can show you a lot better ways to do it than I did. There's two videos that I'm gonna to link to below. One is for handling templates that are bigger than what the Cricut Design Studio can handle and splitting them into two pieces like I did here. The second is how to line up those two pieces and using parchment paper to get everything lined up just right. Feel free to scroll down below and check out those links if you want more information on creating templates like this. My next step is to first apply another coat of white over the letters. The background's white and if I apply a coat of the same background color to these letters, that'll help seal any of the seams so that any bleed out that I get out of the board will be the background color and match the background of the board. Once that's dry, then I can go through and do two coats of black onto the board for the actual lettering. Now that I've painted over the letters with the ivory paint that I used for the background, that'll help seal the stencil so that any bleed out will be from the ivory paint and not from the black paint that I'm actually painting the letters with. I'm gonna first go over the letters with a paintbrush to get black paint on, and then I'm gonna come back with a makeup sponge that has no texture on it at all to help get a nice smooth finish on all of those letters. The moment of truth. The black letters have been painted and are dry. It's time to peel off the stencil. Two things that I'm concerned about. One is, is if that white coat of paint didn't do a good seal, could get some bleed out of the black underneath. I don't think that's gonna to be too big of a problem. The second issue is, 
since I had to use permanent vinyl instead of stencil vinyl, stencil vinyl has a lot less glue on it and it wasn't sticking very well to the chalk paint. So I had to switch to permanent vinyl, which has more glue, which means one, that could pull some of the paint off as I'm removing the stencil, or two, it could leave a lot of glue down on the board while I'm peeling it off. We'll just have to see how it works out. It was a little tedious weeding the centers of all those letters, but overall it turned out pretty good. I've got a little bit of black bleed out and a few of the letters and a little bit of the white background I need to touch up. But once that's done, I need to clear coat it and then start finishing off the frame. It's finally time to handle the assembly of the sign portion of the project. And I've got a few things here to help me out. I've got some tight bond extend glue here. That's gonna give me a little bit more open time so that I can get things assembled without the glue drying too fast on me. I've got some blue tape that's going to help with the initial portion of the assembly and getting things lined up. I've got a strap clamp that I can put over the whole thing once it's all assembled to strap everything down good and tight. And I've got a damp cloth here to clean up any glue squeeze out. So let's go ahead and get moving on the assembly of this. I can't wait to see how it turns out. While the frame is drying, it's time to switch over to working on the hook panel for the project. Now that I've got the bottom hook panel cut to length, which amazingly I managed to do in one cut, I now want to cut a decorative curve at the bottom of the panel. To do that, I'm going to put in a nail on either end a few inches down from the top where I want the curve to start, and then bend this flexible board that's an offcut from the lofted bed project into the curve I want and draw that line. Then I'll cut it. the bottom of this hook panel turned out great. Now I want to get these four hooks positioned on. I'll go ahead and mount them, take them back off, then I want to add some pocket holes to the back that will be used to attach to the frame, and then get everything sanded down before I finally attach it. To make sure the rack has enough strength to hold the weight of four fully loaded bags, I countersunk holes for four screws that will be hidden behind each hook. I then added the pocket holes and began the tedious task of sanding. It's time to get these two pieces assembled. I've got the top picture frame piece and the bottom hook panel piece that I need to attach with those pocket holes. I'm regretting not attaching this piece at the beginning before the frame was assembled. I would have attached the bottom hook panel to the bottom board of the frame. This would have made it a lot easier. This is where I'm at now and I need to get these two attached. So I put down a towel to hopefully prevent any scratches and I'm going to go ahead and get these pocket hole screws put in. Along with the four countersunk screws behind each hook, I also want to attach a French cleat to the back of the frame. Not only will this help to support the weight of the backpacks, but it will also lock the frame flush to the wall. And there we go, two pieces became one. After taking care of those nine pocket holes, it really seems like these two pieces joined up perfectly. I need to sand up the two sides just a little bit to flush things up. Then all I need to do is finish up the bottom with a few coats of white bond poly, as well as touch up the corners a little bit. It'll be mounted to the wall using the French cleat, as well as the four holes that I hid behind the hooks on the bottom. That should be enough to hold a few backpacks. Finally, it was time to mount it to the wall. I even managed to line up a stud with one of the screws behind a hook and the rest were installed with anchors.
project turned out great and it looks exactly like what I had pictured in my head when I started it. The lettering for the stencil was a bit complicated, but it really finished up beautifully. I wasn't too sure about this curve on the bottom of the hook panel, but I am sure glad I did it because it really takes the two separate pieces and brings them into one solid project. I'd like to thank you for following along with this build, and if you feel like I earned it, go down below and click that like button. While you're down there, you can check out the links to all the tools that I used during this build, and you can hit that subscribe button so you can follow along as I release new project videos. Other than that, I just need to grab the kids and get them to hang up their backpacks, and I'll see you on the next project. Where's everybody at? Whoa! How was school? Hey, what do you want for dinner? Hey, and I'm in. Joking. I would never eat off this floor. Okay. Glasses. What? You got an F? Oh, man. This would be a good one for the outtakes.